at what's going on in your life and say, you know, how am I doing? It's time to do a little bit of a personal assessment, right? What's going on in my life? Am I, you know, and, and today's really a day to be grateful for the things that you have. Um, <clears throat> and the, the thing is that I think a lot of people don't really do that. What a lot of people do is they focus on the things they don't have. They focus on the things they want, but never seem to reach, right? Well, DSP, you're the biggest culprit of this that I can think of off the top of my head. You live in a gated community in a really nice area and you work other people's dream job. But yet you get on stream every day and make it sound like you work in the goddamn coal mines or something. You make six figures a year and then you talk about all of the things that you can't afford. You can't afford to fix this. You can't afford to buy new games. You can't afford another chargeback. I can't even recall the last time I've actually heard you be grateful about anything. And I mean really thankful, where you could tell that you were being genuine. And I don't know if that's just because you're generally just so ungrateful all all of the time or that you're just so regarded that no one can actually tell when you mean something because you don't convey your messages properly in life it's like you always have a goal that you're reaching towards and you want to get but you can't really get it it's been like that a lot for me especially these last many years since uh you know i've been married and we're always thinking man man we'd like to really uh get to a position where maybe we can fix some of the stuff in our house that's broken because a lot of things have been breaking down bathrooms dishwashers all kinds of stuff Wow, he actually just confirmed everything I just said. That he's never thankful or appreciative for anything. And then he even went on to mention specifically fixing the bathroom. And I promise this is a first time viewing for me because it came out yesterday on Thanksgiving and I was actually busy, so I didn't have time to watch it then. Man, man, would it be great to eventually go on a, a honeymoon together? <laughs> you know, it's that kind of stuff. And you think about that stuff and you're like, man, it's kind of sad because we can't do that. But you had the chance to go on a honeymoon, DSP. Your mom offered to pay for it, but instead you just swindled her out of more cash so that you could supposedly pay your taxes. Which I don't even know is true. Because weren't you on a payment plan? Or trying to be on a payment plan at least? So why did you need a large sum of cash to pay your taxes if you're on a payment plan or you're trying to be on a payment plan? That just sounds suspicious to me, but what kind of bozo opts to pay for taxes instead of go on a once in a lifetime honeymoon with their now wife? And it didn't even have to be anything fancy or expensive. You guys could have just went somewhere were nice and enjoyed the company of each other after being newly married. But of course not, because that would have been the normal human being thing to do, and DSP is clearly not that. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. <clears throat> Hold on a second here. Sad because you can't do that. What about all the stuff that we have, right? I'm in a great place right now in my personal life. I love my wife. She loves me. I love my wife and she loves me. That's why I only bring her up when I'm talking about what food that she's cooking and I never actually talk about anything that we go out and do together and actually, you know, spend time doing. I love my wife and she loves me. That's why when the internet's out, I don't want to be anywhere near her because what are we supposed to do? Actually talk to each other and do something? I don't think so, buddy. Given the evidence, I've got to press Y to lie on this one, DSP. I'm not buying it. And I really don't see how anybody else could either. Unless you're using the word love in a really platonic way, like you might love a friend or a roommate, Maybe then, but definitely not a romantic style love. We're in a great relationship. I'm incredibly grateful for that because it really is that personal life that I have behind the scenes of what you see on camera. It's that support that I get from her that keeps me going through all the days that we're through stress and nonsense here. It's awesome to have that level of love and support, okay? And that sounds great, it really does. I hope that for everybody, right? But I really just struggle to see where all of this stress is coming from in DSP's life. The dude leaves his house once a week. He plays video games for a living. He spends one day out of his streaming days just staring at other people's content and goat laughing. What is this guy doing that is so stressful? He talks about all of these other appointments and things that he has to go to, but he never actually discloses what any of these appointments are, so I have a hard time believing they're actually anything at all. Because there's nothing stressful about going to curls and twirls and getting your your hair done all lopsided like he does. There really shouldn't be any stress involved when all you have to do is go to the styrofoam place and then go to the dump to get rid of all your garbage that you've been hoarding. It can be tedious, it can be something that you don't want to do, but to say that it's stressful just doesn't make sense. So what is he doing that's equating to all of this stress? The way he talks, you'd think that he's got kids that he's got to raise or he works some hard job, like I said, in the coal mines or something. You might even get the impression that DSP is a low income style individual, but that's just not the case. The dude sits on his ass all day long playing video games making six figures a year that's about as low stress as i can think of jasper kitty my pet but also he's kind of like my son i know i people make fun of me when i say that but of course he's not a human but he really is kind of like you know my kid and 
DSP, that's just awful. Please don't ever actually say that again. Please don't address it like that. Everybody already makes fun of you for that. It's super cringe. You don't need to do that. I can give a pass to 20 something year old girls who don't have children yet, but have animals and treat them like kids or whatever and say like, oh, that's my fur baby. But a 41 year old man talking about a grown cat like that. Nah, bro, please don't do that. Also, you would think that if that's like your son that you would go get his goddamn blood work done. Hashtag justice for Jasper. You'd think if that was like your son that you wouldn't let some sort of pink mold grow on his water dish. I'm just saying that's not something that you would let happen to your human style son, right? He's been a tremendous positive influence on my life ever since we rescued him several years ago. Uh, I love having him around and uh, I'm glad that Kat convinced me to get a pet cat when she did uh, because I had never had a cat before and now you know he's been in my life for several years and it's been awesome, right? What do you mean you've never had a cat before? Didn't your mom have a bunch of cats when you lived with her at the house back in CT? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please. But he seemed very familiar with the cats when he did that video walking back through his parents' house on YouTube, didn't he? Maybe I'm misrepresenting the facts or misremembering the lore. But even if those cats didn't live there when he did, what was there that he didn't understand about living with the cat that changed his mind after he got Jasper that he didn't already know from watching his mom live with a bunch of cats? I mean, you can see what they do because they don't do a whole lot typically you could see what kind of care actually goes into taking care of them and if you spend 30 minutes in a house that has a cat typically the cat will wander by you and you get to experience what it's like to actually interact with a cat you don't really have to own a cat to understand it's just like any other animal um <clears throat> i live in a, in a great house well, you lived in a really nice house. Watching those old moving in vlogs from when you originally moved to Washington, your house was very nice when you moved into it. Very spacious, had a lot of amenities, couple bathrooms, very big rooms. But unfortunately, since you've moved in, you've just let it deteriorate and get worse and worse and never bothered to fix anything or take care of it. So I wouldn't go as far as to say that you live in a good house. And I most definitely wouldn't go as far as to say that you live in a great house. But you do still live in a house and that's more than some people. So I guess, yes, be appreciative for that DSP, please. You know, in general, I'm healthy, even though I'm literally coming out of the second worst cold slash illness I've ever had in my life, and I still have lingering symptoms. I mean, right now, I still have a tiny tickle in my throat. I still got a little bit of, of drippage crap going on, so I might have to blow my nose today. Um, I'm still, in general, happy and healthy. Somehow I knew we weren't gonna get through the appreciation video without mentioning this goddamn sickness. It's been almost over a month now and this dude is still complaining about his illness. I've never heard anyone be such a little bitch about being sick before, oh my God. And then like I said in a previous video, it seems like he's trying to retcon the drippage in his throat and blame it exclusively on this illness, even though he's had post nasal drip the entire time he's been on YouTube apparently. I'm gonna be absolutely beside myself if this is really the narrative that he's gonna try and push. He's just going to try and retcon post nasal drip out of history. You won't get me, Dave. I'll remember forever. And who the hell makes a big production out of whether or not they're going to have to blow their nose today? It's not something that you have to say. If you have to blow your nose, you just keep the tissues by you like you always do because, you know, the camera's on. You mute the mic, you blow your nose, you throw it in the trash can that you probably should have in that room. But that's how a normal person would blow their nose while they're streaming. DSP has to get up, not mute his mic, make a big production. Oh, sorry, guys, I got to blow my nose and then do it for like 45 seconds. Every tiny action for DSP is this grand production that he puts on that nobody wants to watch. And I use grand production very loosely because it's not high quality, it's just a lot for some reason. I am at a great body weight right now in my life. Like I, my weight right now is close to the ideal. You know, I, I balance between just under 200 pounds and a little over 200 pounds and I kind of fluctuate. My ideal body weight is 185. If I actually worked out regularly and did that, I probably would be at it. That's amazing, right? Like that's a huge thing for my life. A lot of my life, I was very overweight, unhappy, not healthy. <laughs> Yes, DSP, you're suffering from muscle atrophy. So I'm not surprised that you weigh significantly less now than you did then. It's very clear to everybody who watches you that you have almost no muscle mass left. And yeah, that's probably due to your sedentary lifestyle. But I don't particularly care what your weight is. And I don't care what your ideal weight is. Because I don't know how you can be satisfied when you have moobs the way that you do. If it looks like you need to be wearing a bra at all times, you definitely still have a lot of work to do. There's no point in being satisfied right now. At this point in my life, I'm probably at one of the healthiest points of my life at 41. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Through my 20s and 30s being, a, you know, an unhealthy person traveling and, and drinking all the time, playing Street Fighter 
and then being a YouTuber in those early days where I would literally, literally every day drink, drink myself into a stupor, you know? And now I'm not doing that awful crap anymore. I would venture to say that there's a lot of 20 year olds who spend a lot of their 20s just drinking all of the time. But most of them don't look like DSP because they have jobs that they go to and they might even actually work out. And they most definitely eat better, at least a little bit. But DSP was throwing back entire handles in the span of like, what, two days? Not going to work, just sitting on his ass playing video games and actually eating fast food three times a day. I just don't know how he thought that was an acceptable lifestyle even in his 20s. Clearly that's not gonna be good for you. Clearly that's gonna have repercussions. And that's probably how he ended up getting gout was because he just didn't take care of himself. And now we're supposed to be shocked and happy that at 41 years old, DSP has finally realized that he can't treat his body like that. He's finally realized something that most people realized in their 20s. And it would be one thing if he just didn't have a job and lived a sedentary lifestyle. It'd be another thing if he just drank a lot, right? It'd be another thing if he just had a lot of fast food. But all of these factors combined, Jesus Christ, DSP, I just don't know how you let that happen. People have been saying, you know, in the last year, I know here's the thing too. I think one of the major reasons people say this is because the camera's better, but they're like, oh, you look so much better. It's like, yeah, but I mean, keep in mind, I got a better camera now. We got better lighting now. I'm dressing differently. A lot of it has to do with presentation, right? DSP, you brought it up. Do you really want to talk about why you're dressing differently? Do you really want to address LTG telling you to work on your sexy and then you actually going out of your way to try and do it, even though you still look like a goober? Or are you just going to sit here and pretend like this was an organic thought that you decided to do all on your own? Which isn't believable for anyone who actually knows anything about the guy. Because he's not willing to make any changes unless somebody actually donates the thing to him or he gets bullied into it. I don't particularly think I look that much better than I ever did. What is this god awful fake humble brag he's doing right now? How many times throughout the year has he told us that he's been looking slimmer? How many times has he addressed this? How many times has he stood up and given us the side view on how small his stomach is now or whatever? This is just some weird way to flex that he's lost weight. And like I said, it's probably just due to the muscle atrophy and not actually to losing any sort of weight. But I feel good. That's kind of the difference. Like I wake up in the morning and I'm energetic and I'm ready to go and I'm happy and ready for the next day. Every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm, I'm happy and ready to go. Yeah, DSP, if I got to sleep till 1045 every day and my only job was to get on stream and play video games, I'd also wake up pretty happy and energetic. It's kind of disgusting that you weren't happy and energetic before that. You have other people's dream job and you don't do any work. And as always, this is not me shitting on video game streamers in general because being entertaining can definitely be work when you put in the work to your stream. But DSP does not do that. All he does is play the game and upload it to YouTube. Unless you're really willing to consider video games work or reading work, DSP does not work and that's different i there used to be you know in my life i don't oh my god i gotta do this shit tomorrow i gotta do that i don't have that feeling that's something to be super grateful for that every day when you wake up you're looking forward positively to what that day has in store and you're really not like dreading anything yeah that's my life and right there, he must have been specifically talking about waking up and feeling dread having to go on stream and play video games. Because to this day, he always talks about how his off day is so busy and he doesn't want to do any of those things. So I'm willing to say that he wakes up and dreads having to do those things, right? So if he's not talking about his off day, he has to be talking about his weekdays. And I just find it kind of disgusting to sit here and tell your audience that throughout the years, you dreaded waking up and having to entertain them. You dreaded having to get on stream and play a game and spend time with them and hang out. There's just just something scummy about that. How the hell could I not be thankful, right, for what I have? <clears throat> so I am so happy for the life that I have. Now, that's the personal, right? That's all the personal stuff. But now let's talk about the stuff that you guys know about, right? This not so personal professional life that I have every single day on stream and in these videos. I'm so grateful that in 2023, 15 years after I first pointed a camera at a crooked angle <clears throat> at a television in my parents' house in a tiny closet-sized overheated bedroom. And after all this time, I still have a following for messing around with video games, for hanging out and talking on a daily basis. It's not as big as it once was, but I don't care.
He doesn't care that it's not as big as it once was, but he did go out of his way to say it. He did go out of his way to address it in a video where he's supposed to be displaying his thankfulness, his appreciation. Why would you do that? Hypothetical here, it's like if your mom bought you a car for Christmas and you go, wow, mom, I'm so thankful. I really appreciate it. It's the exact car I wanted. It's not the color I wanted, but how could I not be thankful? Then why did you mention the goddamn color, dude? It doesn't matter. Shut up. How hard would it have been to just say, I really appreciate all of you guys sticking with me through the years those of you that did it's the same message you just don't sound nearly as ungrateful that way i'm just happy knowing that there's people on this planet that care about me that care about my thoughts about stuff that like the content that i put out whether they find meaning in what i say about games because they value that because they know i'm honest I'm trying to meet some of these people that DSP is always talking about that think he's actually honest. Show me where the DSP fan club meetups are. I want to talk to these people. I want to pick their brain. I'd really love to witness the mental gymnastics that they have to do to think that DSP is honest despite all of the evidence making it very clear that that is not the case. In a weird way, I wish that the opposite of detractor videos existed. I wish there was DSP fans who were making fan videos of DSP and talking about all of the great things that he does and picking apart all of the things that he talks about and talking about why they're so great because that in and of itself is just a spectacle obviously but for some reason those just aren't coming up in my feed i don't see those videos when i look up dsp space gaming on youtube why is that or whether it's they just want to have a good laugh watching my content and having a good time whatever it is you know what i'm saying <clears throat> um i'm just happy to know that people find value in me being here on the internet after so long all right I'm one of those people, DSP. I think that you have value on the internet after so long. Your value is King Lol Cow. It's King E Beggar. That's you. That's what your value is. Now, you might not like that, but you never clarified that it had to be a positive value. I'm incredibly grateful for those of you who love what I do, and you know that I have not conformed to the YouTube norms. You know that I have stayed away from selling out and doing all the stuff that most other people have done on YouTube, on Twitch, everywhere to make a living. Instead, I stick to my guns of, and I know a lot of people say that's being stubborn and you should have changed over time, but I think that's a lot of the reason why I've had the longevity I've had. If I just went down the road that everyone else went, I probably would not be here today. But I just don't think that that is the case, DSP. I think you are where you are because you continuously stick to your guns even when your guns are prop guns that don't actually work. That, for example, is why you spent so long live streaming and not actually interacting with your live chat and audience. I've never heard of anybody else doing that. What a weird thing for you to do, but you continued to do it, like I said, for an extended period of time because you didn't want to be like everybody else. That's why it took you so long to move to direct capture because you spent multiple videos justifying that it's a much better experience to watch all of your gameplay through a camcorder on top of a coffee table. Even going as far as to say that the audio quality was better through your camera than it would have been if you would have done direct capture because it would have sounded too professional. Whatever the hell that even means. Because everybody knows that people just hate listening to professional quality stuff, right? People would rather listen to their music through a garbage can instead of actually just listening to the studio album. Because that's what it sounded like in your gameplay videos back in the day because the room was so big and there was an echo and it just didn't sound right and that's not even talking about the visuals where you constantly couldn't see the colors because they were going in and out and they just weren't being picked up correctly a lot of good a gameplay through is when you can't make out half of the screen half of the time the only thing that you've seriously stuck through that actually works for your channel for some reason is begging and even that obviously has its own drawbacks so i don't really know if you should be sticking to that either i would have faded into obscurity and no one would have given two shits about dark side phil but because I've done things differently, because I marched to the beat of my own drummer, as they say, um, people still care, you know? And yes, there's a lot of negativity, but at the same time, there's a core focus of people who like me for who I am and the content that I put out, and they support it. Of course, we couldn't talk about all of the positive people that followed DSP without bringing up the negative people that followed DSP, because we can't just talk about positive things on this channel. We have to address the negatives at all times. Wouldn't be DSP if we didn't. I am incredibly grateful for the levels of support that you guys give me on a daily basis. Again, no sponsorships, no partnerships, none of that crap. It's you guys that allow me to do what I love every day for a living. And I would be incredibly ignorant <clears throat> and ungrateful if I didn't take the moment here to say thank you all 15 years and in particular these last couple of years where there's been a ton of hate <laughs> and nonsense thrown towards me that you're still here day in and day out supporting what I do.
Again, he has to bring up the hate and nonsense because it's just so difficult to say, hey, I really appreciate all of you guys coming through, especially the past couple of years. There's just no point in bringing up the negativity in an appreciation video. What is the point of that? I'm very grateful for that. Oh, one other thing. We absolutely know that this year I've been a target, correct? Absolutely. Oh my God, are you serious? This is really a segment? Consider me God smacked. I can't believe this. In an appreciation video. This year, I've been a major target um, for many different things. And despite their efforts to try to derail content, to pull me into drama, to try to have our community attacked, harassed, distracted, we've avoided all of that. You notice that? Still here? Yes, obviously they've avoided all of that. That's why they spent almost five days in a row talking about Turkey Tom in the documentary that he made. That's why he went on that hour long rant about Turkey Tom specifically. That's why during the summer he tried to beef with LTG because he was just ignoring all of the drama. He wasn't getting sucked into it, dude. He was so good at ignoring all of the negatives and not being sucked into drama that he called all of his detractors a waste of life and then continued to say that the world would be better off without them. Make that make sense, please. Putting out a fun stream for you every day doesn't matter what crap they do it doesn't matter what bullshit they're trying to do we don't fall for it right we learn th this is the difference between the old phil from back in the day and 41 year old wiser phil is that i'm not going to keep getting sucked into their stuff you know what i mean i'm not at one point i was i would get sucked there and they're looking for reactions right they're looking for me to react directly and say things about what they say and try to get involved and you know i don't play that game on purpose why would i why would i ever engage with toxicity that's just going to not only negatively affect me but affect all of you as well I seriously wonder how the hell this guy can come on stream every day and say these things with a straight face. What does he think that he just did over the last week? How many Turkey Tom videos did I put out, let alone that he actually put out? He spent an entire pre-stream talking about Turkey Tom. Sitting here talking about, oh, all they want is a reaction and why would I engage with that? What the hell do you call that then? An hour long pre-stream entirely about one person isn't a reaction all of a sudden? And it's even more specific than that. His exact words is they want him to react directly to the things that they say that's exactly what he did when he went on that hour-long pre-stream rant he specifically was reacting to the things that turkey tom said in his response video i actually can't believe this either dsp lives in a different plane of reality than me or he's just in denial so deep i can't even fathom it we are a community understand that this is not just me sitting here in front of a camera it's also just as important that you're there watching and engaging and caring about the content. So if I'm wasting my time being distracted by drama and nonsense and toxic stuff. Like in that hour long rant pre-stream you did, right? That takes away from our good times together, right? And I know that, and I've learned from that. Earlier this year, I made a mistake. I learned from that mistake and I have avoided remaking that mistake. And that's great. And you wanna know why? You, because of your feedback. Because I ask you guys for honest feedback, you give it to me, and I'm like, there you go. Yes, because DSP is the guy who is known for getting feedback, double tapping the side of his head, and then, you know, there you go, actually making the change that you asked for. Completely ignore and disregard the suggestion box segment we just did earlier in the week. You remember that absolutely toxic filled sludge that was the suggestion box where he shit on every single suggestion that he received? Yeah, memory hole that. You better forget about it. Don't ever bring it up in chat or it's ban on site, obviously. And by the way, you know Cat agrees. It's a group effort, man. It really is. Unlike most other content creators, I feel like this is 100% a group effort between us. It's two-sided here. Oh, it's definitely a group effort for a bunch of people to continuously support your charity case ass. Because it's essentially a bunch of people just making sure that this potential homeless man isn't on the street without shelter, food, and water. Because like I always say, I don't think that DSP could do a normal person's job. He's absolutely impossible to work with and been shown to be a detriment to everyone he's ever worked for. This is really his only option as far as I'm concerned. This or being on the actual streets. This is a crowdfunded homeless man at the end of the day. Well, I guess he's not homeless because he has a home, but you know what? i'm saying you know and it's beautiful because it works right it's not just oh what's the next sponsorship what's the next thing to shill so i can pay my bills and i pump out a video or a stream today and i'm done and i turn off the camera and you know i don't care about it it's the opposite it's actually 
stuff that I care about, you care about, and everyone wants to see continue, and that's meaningful to me, okay? Oh yeah, DSP, super meaningful to me. There's an entire song about it, actually. Big Up's Meerkat Mob, The Go. And listen, this year has not been without its challenges, all right? For me, you know some of those challenges because you've seen them publicly, right? I've been, I've been, I've been having things stolen from me, my, a tire off of my freaking car. LOL. But every time that I think we're just getting out of the toxic and negative parts of this video, he goes right back in. It's like a switch. As soon as he thinks about something negative, he just has to address the negative things. He can't just continuously talk about a positive thing for an extended period of time. Right? That I certainly wasn't expecting. Um, I've had multiple attacks, both in the public and private eye. Uh, you know, people trying to take me down in various different ways for no good reason. Saying the word attack like that makes it sound like he was physically attacked IRL, and that's just not the case. He's actually addressing a bunch of people just talking shit about him on the internet. What a melodramatic drama queen. Dude, you're a public figure. Everyone's gonna have something to say about you, and you get no control over it. Sorry, chief. It comes with the territory, and if you don't like it, you can go on and do something else. Maybe if you would have conducted yourself in a more dignified way on the internet, this wouldn't be happening, but obviously you didn't do that, and it's too late now. Um, <clears throat> and... This year had a lot of personal challenges. Things you guys have no idea about. You remember, there's certain times of this year I wasn't able to stream, and that's very abnormal for me that I would not be here. Because as you know, I'm one of the most consistent content creators out there when it comes to adhering to a set schedule and you know you can depend on me to be here. Yes, DSP, everyone's aware that you're highly artistic about your schedule. It's one of the key defining traits about you, that you're unwilling to change your schedule, and that you insist on having it set up about a week in advance. And heaven forbid that it have to change on the fly because you finish a game too early or something. That's one of the main reasons why he won't ever quit a game, because his schedule's already set around a game taking a specific amount of time. And if he cuts it short, he has to find something else to do, and the dude just hates changing his schedule. He loves to act as if though people are going to be upset that he has to change what he's doing and that they're not going to be made aware of it but he gives them an update every single day via text and verbally several times throughout the streams so who the hell isn't gonna know and you know to not have me here you know every once in a while some people are like oh i don't even know what's uh, what's going on right um <clears throat> yeah because i can't tell you you know what i'm saying i can't really explain the stuff because sadly you know what people do with this information right any real information that I were to give you guys about private stuff in my life <clears throat> would be used against me to hurt me. Please keep in mind that this is supposed to be an appreciative, thankful, American Thanksgiving style video. And we're sitting here talking about the trolls and what conspiracy theories they concoct when they're given information. Very positive and curated content, if you ask me. Um, another way that I've learned my lesson over the years. Back in the day, I would have told you about everything that I went through this year. Every appointment, every meeting, everything going down that was serious business behind the scenes, you would have known all about it. But I don't anymore. I purposefully separate my public and private lives, so that way there is no more of that intersection and no more chance that you get hurt over that kind of stuff. So, and I, listen, I apologize for that because like I said, I feel like we do have a connection. You'll care about me, I care about you, We that's why... We have this relationship, and that's how I continue to thrive and be successful. And it sucks that I can't tell you about other stuff that's going on in my life. But that's how it's got to be. Because sadly, there's just too many people out there who do want to do what they can to hurt me and then get their jollies off on it, right? Yeah, dude, it really sucks that you can't overshare with your audience on the internet anymore. Isn't that crazy? It's almost like that's actually a bad idea for anybody on the internet. But if that's what you want, DSP, still feel free to do it. So I hope you understand that. But I, you know, this is a very, very challenging year uh, for me and my family. Uh, all the stuff going on behind the scenes, and you know, to be here where I am right now, <clears throat> and to say, "Hey, I'm still here. I'm happy. I'm healthy. We're doing fun stuff together every day, right? It's awesome." And you know what? Here, here's something that's absolutely funny. All right, I will say this. Jesus Christ, this dude couldn't make it 30 real life seconds talking about the positivity that his audience brings him without going back to the negativity. Please, somebody else, take this footage and add up all of the time that he's spent being negative in this video and compare it to all of the time that he's actually spent being positive in this video. I would just love to see the difference. 
This year, I noticed a distinct drop-off in overall views on my on-demand videos only. And what I mean by that is my streams still get the same amount of views and all the same. Only the on-demand videos somehow saw a drop in views. And I started analyzing the data on this, looking at it, and I came to the determination it hasn't affected me at all business-wise. God, I would love to see the analysis that he was doing. I'd love to see whatever piece of paper he was writing on at the time to crunch those numbers. Dude's adult who can't even count correctly on his fingers half the time, and we think that he's doing some sort of actual analysis? Give me a break. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, so what does that really mean? It either means that YouTube always inflated views, and they're meaningless, or it means that there were people coming to my content and watching it on demand for toxic reasons, but they weren't supportive people. They weren't watching because they liked the content. They were just watching it to leech off of it and probably make fun of it. And it never resulted in anything positive for me or my business or my family or the community. Or it could just mean that less people are watching your videos on YouTube and you're relying more and more on your whales live on stream. Why is that not an option? Why is that not something that it could totally be? I'm starting to think maybe your analysis and the conclusions that you come to are inaccurate and they just kind of suck in general, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I had this suspicion when you were supposedly conducting your Street Fighter 6 experiments, but this is just kind of more corroborating evidence that everything that you say you're analyzing or that you're taking into consideration or coming to conclusions on is just stupid. So even though views have gone down overall on the content I'm putting out on demand, it didn't affect me. Like, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, the days of me caring about being in the YouTube algorithm are long behind me. I don't care about being pushed as a recommended video. I don't care about, oh, you search for a new game playthrough and Dark Side Phil or DSP Gaming pops up. But you can't say that and be honest, DSP, because that's why you ask for the likes and engagement. That's why you ask people to leave comments for the algorithm. Specifically leave comments that say, I'm trying to help DSP with the algorithm. If you don't care about the algorithm, then why are you telling people to do that? That doesn't make any sense. You're just lying. Those days are so far behind. You know, what I care about now is putting out content for the audience I have. And every once in a while, someone stumbles upon my stuff and gives it a shot and likes it, right? That's it. I, I'm never going to make YouTube turn around and say, hey, put me back into the search engine, dude. They're not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> no, and they wouldn't just put you into the algorithm arbitrarily because you asked them to. You would actually have to go out of your way to try and put yourself back in the algorithm. You would actually have to put some sort of work into bettering your content to better fit the audience that's on YouTube. But you just refuse to do that. You refuse to do any sort of work whatsoever that might actually bring eyes to your channel. You're completely satisfied as long as the whales that you have currently keep showing up. And that's why you're on level one. So it's just funny to me because absolutely, you know, people who want to say negative stuff, they say things like, oh, your views went down this year. And I look and I'm like, if you're talking about overall video views, you're right. But it's weird because it hasn't affected me at all. Like in general, it, it really hasn't at all. The business is fine. It's been operating at the same level with apparently less on-demand views. So you tell me what was the per what was going on there. I don't even get it. It almost feels to me like there was something going on with overinflated views on YouTube to begin with. Or you know what I mean? And then it's just gone. It didn't matter because it wasn't real. Conspiracy side, Phil is back. Apparently, with no evidence whatsoever, he's just going to start claiming that there was overinflated views previously on YouTube that weren't real. I don't know what sort of benefit that would have had to YouTube themselves, but I'm not the one making this accusation. If it doesn't affect me, then who cares, right? So anyway, um, thank you all for an amazing year. That's not over, by the way. You know, we've got so much fun stuff still between now and the end of 2023, including chill streams like today, this awesome marathon tomorrow, which we're going to talk about in a moment. God, I hate how much he hypes up the Adpocalypse Marathon as if anybody actually wants to watch shitty ads all day long. What a terrible idea for an event. Uh, all kinds of holiday fun and festivities, animations and things are coming up that are going to be all Christmas related. We got special Christmas event that'll be, uh, you know, right before Christmas. Um, I'm actually going to start reviewing uh, holiday movies starting in December. So I'll probably review three or four holiday movies over the course of the month, which will be really cool. Hey, you guys remember when people asked him to do less React content and instead to play more video games? Yeah, he's not going to listen to that whatsoever, and he's going to continue to do his React content and continue to pump out these Christmas movie reviews like he did for Halloween. DSP, the king of taking feedback, obviously. Um, among other things. And of course, all the game playthroughs that we're currently playing. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's awesome. So, no negatives at all. Everything's good, man. Everything, I'm feeling good. I'm enjoying myself. I know that you guys are too. And I really appreciate you all.
I do. Thank you all for everything you do for me. Because just as much as I put out content for you, and you, you know, a lot of people express their gratitude every day. You know, hey, thanks for making the content. I appreciate you guys watching it and supporting it. Because that's how this works. Even his thankful segments just seem disingenuous at this point. I don't know why he bothers trying, but I appreciate him trying nonetheless. I'm there, you know, again, don't get you know that support from other sources. It's you. And you guys have resoundingly told me through thick and thin, <clears throat> through times of great positivity and great negativity, right? Highs and lows, peaks and valleys, no matter what life throws at me or us, that you want this to continue. You find meaning in me being here, making content for you daily, and I'm appreciative of that, and I thank you for that. Message received. I ain't gonna stop unless I'm ready. I just hate the way that he uses the word meaningful as some sort of catch-all to just say that people enjoy his content. Just say that people enjoy it. Why do you have to make it something that it's not, that they find it meaningful? What a useless word. Everybody finds meaning in something, DSP. That doesn't automatically make it okay. That doesn't automatically make it a good thing. That's the thing that I think a lot of people hate is that they realize that there's nothing they can do. I'm going to be here making content for you guys for as long as I want until the day that I decide to hang up the mantle and say, I retire. I don't know when that'll be. I don't even know if that'll be, you know? Now, DSP doesn't hurt my feelings whatsoever. I'm hoping that I get to continue to laugh at you for a while longer. I know that other people in the community don't feel that way, but that is how I feel. But it is kind of sad that he has no idea if or when he'll be able to retire. Not because he's reliant on social security or not because he's reliant on the economy, but just because he fumbled his bag as hard as he did. While other content creators his age who have been around as long as him have retired and moved on or do this part-time because they genuinely enjoy it, DSP's stuck here doing this every single day, caught in this rat race because he fumbled his bag just that hard. So please use DSP as a lesson. Make sure that you budget properly and that you don't buy a bunch of shit that you don't need. Try and better your life. Don't let yourself be like this pig roach. The thing is that I enjoy this a lot so much that even if as I get older, if I find that I can't really play video games anymore because I'm getting so old or whatever, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I couldn't still make content, right? doesn't not at all and i guess we'll see as i get older how things evolve do i think that full time for the rest of my life i'll keep doing video game content i would like to and that's exactly what i'm talking about isn't that just sad to hear the dsp can't just move on from what he's doing currently he can't just go live his life and enjoy spending time with his wife and just enjoy the quiet life of living in his house with all of the things that he's worked for and doing the things that he enjoys because streaming is definitely not something that he enjoys playing video games at this point is not something that he enjoys he can lie all he wants but i'm not buying it but at this point the only thing that dsp does enjoy is drinking which he would drink himself to death and pulling hogan's and if he spent his time just straight pulling Hogan's all the time he'd be all the way through his money in an instant but is it feasible you know I've already told you guys sometimes this year as I've been playing Street Fighter 6 there's certain characters I just can't play with I can't play with Aki I tried dude my hand was killing me trying to play with that character very execution heavy I can't really do that stuff anymore and it's just gonna get worse and worse the older I get you know what I mean so there's gonna be times when we're gonna have to adapt and change but I feel like I can listen to your feedback and we could change for the better and do different kinds of content and stuff with each other pretty much for as long as I want. Because it sure seems to me that I have the audience that's going to be staying with me, you know what I mean, for a long time. And I really appreciate that. That people are with me no matter what. And, you know, this wild ride of life we've been on together for the last 15 years and it's going to continue on, right? So thank you all. Yes, DSP just confirmed to his dents that they're going to have to continue to support his ass for years and years to come with no way out. I'm sure they really appreciated hearing that on their Thanksgiving. Nothing like getting your financial assignment set in stone on a holiday, huh? But that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully all of you enjoyed hearing DSP be very appreciative and thankful on his American Thanksgiving style video. Of course, big shout out to Duty Streams for the clip today. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, a big shout out to all of you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far in the video. Thank you. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. But until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that snore text. Ah!